This lesson is the first one in a series of things that we call transformations, and a transformation changes one figure into another. So we've got our original figure, and then the new figure is called the image. And the translation uh, is what we're going to look at today, and it's also known as a slide. So you can look at this picture right here. They're taking this. It looks exactly the same, but it's just in a different spot. So all we have to do down in example one is say whether it was a translation or not. So look at the blue figure and then look at the red figure. And does it look like the exact same shape, just in a different location? So letter A is definitely a yes because it got slid kind of like up and to the right. Um, letter B is not. It's something that we're going to look at another time, which is called a rotation, but that's not what we're looking at today. Today we're just looking at translations. The way that you do a translation on the coordinate grid, which is mostly we're going to be looking at, is by doing the following things. Let's say that I start at point A here on the red shape and I want to move or translate to this blue shape. And I'll talk about what those dashes mean in a moment. But so if I want to start at A and I want to end up at, a, at this other A, I would move to the right and then I would move down. Now we know the x-axis has to do with the horizontal movements and the y-axis has to do with vertical movements. So what we do if we want to move horizontally, move left or right, is we would add to the x value to move horizontally. And I'm going to add to the y value to move vertically. Now in algebra language, the way that you would say that in a lot less words would be, I'm going to start with a point, x, y, and I want to transform it into x plus a, y plus b. And a and b just represent the numbers that you would add. Now, if you think about moving left or down, if you want to move to the right, you would add a number. If you want to move to the left, you would subtract a number. So really, plus A is this generic way of saying you're going to add or subtract to the X value, and this is add or subtract to the Y value. So it doesn't always mean that you're adding a positive number. You could be adding a negative number, which would be in turn subtracting. So let's just draw a little picture for that, very short, so we can keep track. If you want to move uh, right or up, it's going to be positive. If you want to move left, if you want to move left or down, it's going to be negative. Let's talk about this apostrophe thing over here. Now, you wouldn't read this as A apostrophe or A dash. The way that you read it is A prime. And the reason that we have that is because if I just call it point A, and this is also point A, and I said to you, what are the coordinates of point A, you m would then need to say to me, which point A are you talking about? Are you talking about this point A or this point A? So what we do is we add an apostrophe, but we call it a prime. And so therefore, if I say, what are the coordinates of point A, you know I'm talking about this, because if I wanted this point, I would say, what are the coordinates of A prime? And now every time you add another shape to the grid, you would put another apostrophe. But that's for a further lesson. That's not for right now. But right now what you need to know is that we don't just label A, B, C. And of course you have to put the letters on your vertices. But what we do is we put the little dashes to represent that that is the image. That's the new shape. Also keep in mind, if you don't put the primes, you are wrong. It is wrong if you just call it point A. You have to call it A prime. All right, let's do a translation. So they want us to translate the triangle that you see in the picture three units right and three units down. 
and then we have to say what the coordinates are. So all you do is you take your pen or pencil and you start with point with a point. You don't have to start with point A. And then you just count three units to the right and three units down. And then that's A prime. So I'm going to remember that it's at one negative two. I'm going to put a dot that is A prime. So I put my dot. And then while I put my dot, I also write A prime. Don't do all the dots and then have to go back later and do the letters. Do them as you put the dot. So now I go to point B. I go three to the right, three down, put my dot. It's at five, two. And I labeled it B prime. And now I go to C. I go three to the right, three down. It's at four, negative one. And I put my dot and label it C prime. Now I'm going to connect it and it should look the same. If it looks different, like it's all of a sudden like slanted in a different way, then I know that I did something wrong. Don't just move on and say that you have it if you know that it's the wrong shape. The last thing that they want me to do is write down what the coordinates are. And if you are good at remembering what that algebraic um, representation was that we put on the chart in the previous page, then you should be able to uh, understand that really all we're doing is we're adding 3 to the x value and subtracting 3 from the y value. But since I have the picture, I can just say that a prime is at 1, negative 2, b prime is at 5, 2, and c prime is is at 4, negative 2. Don't forget the primes, don't forget the letters, and let's move on to example 3. A landscaper represents a park using the coordinate plane. He draws a square with these vertices to represent the location of the new fountain. City officials want to move the fountain, find the coordinates of the image, then draw the original figure and the image in the coordinate plane. So lots of things going on, but they did tell us the coordinates of the original square. So that's pretty straightforward. We can just pause the video right now and plot that um, park. All right, your square should look like mine. If the letters are missing, put them in. Don't come to class with missing letters. And then what they want to do is they want to move the fountain four units left and six units up. So if you remember the algebra technique, you can just do your addition or subtraction and get the new coordinates, or you can count boxes with me. So I'm going to go, each dot is going to go four left and six up. So A is going to land at one, two, three, four, and then six up right there. Uh, so that's going to be A prime at negative three, four. Oh, it's very shadowy. Um, and then B prime is going to go 4 to the left and 3 and 6 up. So that's right here at, uh, I just did it without the arrow. It's right here. Uh, C prime is 4 to the left, 6 up. So that's right here at negative 1, 2. And D prime, I can just finish the square because it should look the same. Remember, the rule is that it should look the same, but just in a different position. So I didn't actually count my 4, 6. I just knew where the square was going to land. And then uh, we drew the image. Um, we have to find the coordinates. So let's write down A prime is at negative 3, 4. B prime is at negative 1, 4. C prime is at negative 1, 2. And D prime is at negative 3, 2. All right, that's all we had to do for example 3. We drew the image, we drew the original, and we wrote the coordinates. And uh, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.